When I was younger, I was just like, do whatever, like, whatever the wind blows, I would go that way. I start my career as a graphic design. Ten years ago, we don't really have a UX, a UI, a product design. So I was juggling around between the print design, brand design, and website design. Starting my career was fairly unconventional. First job out of college was a financial analyst for a manufacturing plant. To go from a financial analyst all the way into, you know, managing infrastructure teams for a, a financial tech company um, is a really weird trajectory and I've had some very cool experiences, very cool opportunities. I started my career in 1998 as a computer science graduate. After working in a variety of technical roles, I moved to project management in 2009. Um, I realized I enjoyed project management more. So I graduated computer engineering. So um, I started off as the, a programmer and kind of naturally just moved into the management role because you know I started managing projects and all of that. I've been working here for more than three years and um, I started my career here as a recruitment specialist. Um, and I graduated from the bachelor degree of computer engineering. I decided to do my first working place as a QA engineer and I still learn a lot and trying to prove myself and I try to like, learn the technology the way that uh, we work as a QA. So it's not really that simple at a time because we don't really have the right goal in our mind. I have to uh, learn along the way and draw out my career like step by step, not, not from the right in the beginning, you just have to adjust along the way. I can't say it was easy. Um, there were obstacles uh, and there were challenges and then there were things that did happen to be easy. And sometimes it's about great timing and sometimes it's about taking advantage of opportunities. But most of the time it's about getting out of your comfort zone and figuring it out. After five to six years of like recruitment and HR generalist, I finally moved into the business partner and my main job is to um, develop the organization. For me it's not so easy, but it's not so difficult. I would say I took a different path. Being in the recruitment helped me a lot to understand the whole picture of the business or of the structure of the organization. I wanted to be an architect, <laughs> but yeah, I think due to the economy or whatever happened at the time, I didn't move forward with that role. But I also like the, the path that I chose, you know, because I just, just decided to choose whatever I wanted to do at the time. And yeah, I, if I didn't like it after I started working for a while, I would have changed it anyways. Well, basically, uh, when I was younger, I was just like, do whatever, like, whatever the wind blows, I would go that way. So, as long as it's in the design. Um, when I was young, I watched too many um, series, I guess, or movies. So I wanted to be a criminologist or um, a medical scientist. When I like, I'm in the middle school, I would like to be a pilot, but at that time, uh, when I consult with my teacher, it might be a little bit hard for women. I think tech industry is not defined for either men or women. For me, it was defined by the interest. It probably kind of like, you know, um, maybe a stereotype a little bit that think that this tech is for men. But nowadays, there's more, a lot more women that is interested in tech as well. To work with people, it doesn't matter if it's a male or female, it's just people that, uh, that have the same interests. In my previous company, I definitely felt the, the boys club mentality and the glass ceiling uh, sentiment. And to see the last few years, uh, such a huge influx of women coming into the tech industry and being surrounded by women all day and throughout the week in almost every meeting I'm in now, uh, can't appreciate it more. Uh, in my current uh, position and at Omise, I don't feel that I see women in all levels of leadership, in all levels of um, 
operation. You know, I've been with the company almost eight months. So far, I don't really see an obstacle associated with my gender. When uh, I need to uh, manage the relationship with uh, my colleague or my supervisor who are men, uh, it might be a little bit harder than male, but I don't think it's a blocker. I believe that uh, my supervisor and my colleague will focus on my work output rather than try to judge me based on my gender. Uh, I think it's also your own mindset of you know when you're working and if you have your own opinion you just say it out i think it's um not something that is going to be a problem in your work life contrary to general expectations um, in india there are many women in the tech sector so i did not face much gender discrimination for me the greater challenge was to manage my two children and a full-time tech job at the same time I think my challenge as a design manager is dealing with people uh, to have to manage their expectations, to tell them good news, bad news. Um, first, it's the people. The challenge is to you know try to understand them, try to meet the expectation while I still have to keep and achieve the expectation of um, the company. It's fun but it's also a challenge. I don't think that I have much challenge except for the natural, you know, the work challenge that we, everyone does. And I'm very lucky that I have a really great team here. I have a really supportive boss. My transition to Thailand has been as close to seamless as it could be. Our people operations team at Omise are just top notch. I have nothing to compare to except I have friends and family who have done the transitions to working overseas uh, and no one has had such a simple experience figuring out how to ride the BTS or um, you know navigate the the payment methods here uh, so that I can get food from Grab have definitely been much more complicated but even so uh, the transition has been fairly simple. I joined Open during the pandemic, so processing my visa was a challenge, but the people of STEAM uh, made sure that everything was fine. Open has also been very supportive towards me in my personal life. Earlier this year, my entire family was um, detected with COVID and we were stuck in a test and go hotel. The people of STEAM extended all the support possible. Um, while I was recovering from COVID, uh, the project management team also shared my workload uh, so that the project was not impacted. The learning culture helped me a lot in developing myself. You know, we allow people to learn and trial, even though I receive a lot of um, advice from my managers. I also feel that I receive a lot of trust and that helps me to gain more confidence in what I'm doing. And um, if I have questions or if I have something I'm not sure, I know that I can bring it up. I know that we can create the open conversation with my managers. As an expat, one of the greatest challenges is fitting in with the company culture. At Open, we have a very inclusive and welcoming culture. Uh, I also found out that we are very passionate about what we do and we like to have fun while doing it. Open has been very flexible with working hours. You're given the opportunity to, to set your own time, to manage your own uh, responsibilities and the expectation is, uh, is with you. So it's like you know, self-empowerment to do that. The opportunity to work for a company like Omise where you know, our team can be so autonomous and being able to allow my team to work in environments where they most thrive, right? So if they want the collaborative component of coming into the office um, or if they want to be, you know, in Phuket for a week, those are all accessible and something that I've definitely taken advantage of myself with my family being overseas. But I feel very fortunate at Omise to have found uh, a really beautiful balance that allows me to uh, feel very, very effective. I appreciate the opportunity to, to have uh, here in Thailand for working for a Thai tech company like Homeisip.